One of the more difficult tasks when working with different generations of equipment is getting them to talk together. And that includes Alan Bradley to Alan Bradley. So here we have a MicroLogix 1400 PLC. And here we have a Compact Guard Logix PLC. This is an older PLC that's kind of on its way out. And this is a newer PLC that recently came out. Now, I see on its way out very loosely because when i say on its way out we're probably talking another couple of decades and that's why this is a very important lesson that i thought we needed to go ahead and hit the record button on so let's say that maybe we have a machine that you know has one part on it that works extremely well but maybe another part of it is more aged and so we can replace our entire plan at one time so we're going to put this new machine in, but we still need to talk to this old machine. That's what we're going to talk about today. And there's two ways we can do it. We can have the control logics or compact logics do the reading and writing, or we could have the micro logics do the reading or writing. Or a lot of people will tell me, and I'm not arguing completely against it, besides the fact that as y'all watch many of my videos, you know, there's not a lot of rules. We could have this PLC read data from this PLC and this PLC read data from this PLC. And from a troubleshooting perspective, that is king. But I want us to understand the why of why people say that. So in this video, we are going to configure read and write messages to read and write to tags in our Compact Guard Logix PLC. And this will work with any Studio 5000 PLC. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off in Studio 5000. And we're going to go File, New. We're just going to start with a blank program, and this is going to be my MicroLogix messaging. And just hit next on that. I am going to run 36 on this one. Doesn't really matter, though. And all I'm going to do in this program is right-click controller tags, new tag. Then we're going to make a tag called data from MicroLogix. We'll create it as a double integer. Actually, we, I don't think we'll go real deep in this, but let's go ahead and make that have a dim zero of 10. That way we can take a group of data. And then let's make one new tag called data to MicroLogics. And we'll also hit the dialog box and make it a dim zero of 10. And OK, create. So all we've done is made two arrays. One, we will use our MicroLogix to write data to. The other, we'll use our MicroLogix to read data from. So on the opposite side of that, we're going to be over here in RSLogix 500, and we're going to go new, and I have a 1766 Series A MicroLogix 1400 PLC. And yeah, we're going to open up our program. We're going to add a new wrong. And the first thing we're going to need is a sample rate timer. And we have a lot of videos talking about this. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to our user tab. And we're going to go look for a zero down. We're going to go to our, input, our timer counter tab and bring a TON down. And this will be T4 colon zero. And this is going to be our sample rate. And this will be a time base of thousands, and we'll make it 1,000 on a preset. And then in front of it, we have a go look for zero for T4 colon zero dot DN. And this pretty much will make the done bit true for a single scan every second. And then we're going to bring another new rung down and bring a go look for a one. We'll grab that same T4 colon zero dot DN from above. And then we're going to go to our input output category and bring an MSG instruction down. Now, by default, there are no MSG data types over here. So we're going to right click data files new. And we are going to select a message data type. And we're going to be right back here in a second, but I want you to understand why on each step of this. So now we can go MG. 09, that's going to be our read from PLC. Ah, well, they're all PLCs. That's not really descriptive, is it? Let's make that read from Studio 5000. How about that? And then we go into our setup screen, 
And for this, we are going to go out the Ethernet port, and we are going to do a PLC type read. And then next, we got to tell it what data type do you want me to read. Now, yeah, this is in this controller. Now, over here in Studio 5000, we created an array of double integers. Now, we don't have a double integer in RS500. We have a long data type. Next thing we're going to need is a long data type over here. So we're going to right-click data types new, and it fills it in automatically to number 10, and we're going to select a long. And then, next thing, we're going to leave the elements like they are, so we can talk about that. And we'll click OK. And so in this controller, we want it to be L10 colon 0. And the size and elements is going to be 10. All right, now we're going to come back to the target device in a second, or the address. But now we need a routing and information file. So that's another data type over here. And it's an RI. So we're going to right-click data files, new. If we go into here, we're going to find our routing information. Select it. Also, make sure that you're not doing the extended routing information. It's just routing information. And we'll click OK. And so this will be RI. And then down here it says 11. So 11 colon C run. Oops, that was not right. RI 11 colon C run. There we go. And then we're going to go to the multi hop tab. We need to tell it what is the IP address of the PLC you want me to read from, which, speaking of which, if, if I forget in the video, you don't you don't hit that download button. We need to get this channel configuration. I forget it every video. But all right, so my Compact Logix PLC is at 192.168.20.191. That is, make sure we understand that, that is this PLC's IP address. That's what you're putting in there in that multi-hop tab. Now, I forgot, like I do every video, to enter the IP address of this MicroLogix PLC. So over here, we need to go to the channel configuration, channel 1. And by default, if you download this, boot P is going to be enabled. We're going to uncheck that. And this is 192.168.20.43. And then my subnet is 255.255.255.0. And chances are you will not have a gateway, but I do have a gateway on this setup. So 192.168.20.1. And we'll click OK. Now, this cell here may be uh, the most difficult cell, especially from a troubleshooting perspective, because it's asking here data table address. Now, in Studio 5000, we don't have data tables. We have tag-based address. We're going to be reading this. So we really feel like we need to copy this come over here to 500 and do a little paste there and we should be done. We'll hit the verify button and it's angry at us. And it says address must be specified for target. Okay. And then we think, well, okay, yeah, maybe we needed the bracket zero bracket here. So we enter that in and then we hit the verify button and it is still angry at us. Address must be specified for the target. Now, the issue is this data table address right here, it is looking for something like an L10 colon zero, like it's used to over here. And it has no idea that these tags here exist. I really could use your help here. So, you know, we do PLC training classes, mainly on troubleshooting machines. And this may be the most difficult one to troubleshoot because... What we're getting ready to add, if we don't leave some way for someone to know this, it's nearly impossible for somebody to figure it out. So what we're wanting to do right now is we want to say, okay, you got this old ancient data file location. I got these new really cool names. We need to draw a line between here and here. We need to map those two lingos. And so that's what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Studio 5000, to the Logic tab, and we have Map PLC SLC Messages. And so we click it, and Data to MicroLogix PLC. That's the first one we want. 
And then it's asking what file number you want to call this. You can call it any file number you want and just arbitrarily, mainly so that you don't think it's linked to um, what we're doing to RS500. I'm just going to make this file number 20. That's it. Now, while we're at it, we have the data from, we're going to need it in a second. So let's go and do this. And while we're at it, we're going to make it file number 21. Now, those numbers right here are arbitrary. I just pulled them completely out of my head. But now we can tell this, instead of looking for these words, we're going to look for L20 colon zero. And then we're going to hit the verify button and it's happy now. Now, what I want you to do is let's go and download both of these programs and make sure our read message works first. And then we'll deal with the write message. And if you need any help download your programs or configuring your drivers or you're like, oh, I just stumbled across your channel, then look down in the description. We have a link to a whole course on this. And go and hit that subscribe button. We put out at least one how-to a week. All right, both programs are downloaded, and at least it appears that we're reading data. So this is reading from L20. And over here in Studio 5000, we mapped L20 to data to control to MicroLogics. So now we should be able to open up data to MicroLogics. And I'm just going to put one, two, three in that one. And we go over here. And it should be putting that in L10, zero. So open up L10, zero. And there's your one, two, three. And we go up here and we put in five, four, three, two, one and number nine. And we go over here and we have five, four, three, two, one and number nine. So that takes care of our read message. Now we need a write message. So let's go ahead and go back offline. Just in RS Logics, because we're done and we're done in this. And in, th in this video, we are only we're only using this to store our tags. We're reading writing from this. And we have a complimentary video, and we have a complimentary video that will do the opposite on this, and we'll do all this in studio. But so now what we want to do is we're firing this every second. Now be really careful. If you fire a bunch of messages at one time. There's a limit to the number of times we can fire. But what we can do is we can take the done of this one and fire the next message. Now, we should add some error handling later to that. But just so we can understand these concepts, we're going to bring a new rung down. And we're going to bring a go look for a one down. And we're going to be looking at this message's done bit. So that's mg9 colon 0 dot dn. And then we're going to actually, just to make our life easier, we're going to copy this message instruction and we're going to paste it right down here. Oops, we're going to paste it on the right side of it. Because that's going to give us roughly the structure we need. And then we're going to take this and make this MG1. And this will be our right to Studio 5000. And then since we did that copy and paste, notice it's already in here. Now, our target device in this case is what do you want to write to? Well, over here, we configured our map tag of 21 data from MicroLogix. That's the one we're writing to. So we'll go over here, and we're going to change this to L21. That takes care of that. Now... I'm actually semi-curious here sometimes. I believe I probably could use the same routing information here. And somebody in the comments tell me whether I could or not. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and change that to a 1. That way we don't have any unplanned learning opportunities. And this goes smooth. It is going to take up a little more memory. But I believe since we are doing the exact same address, I believe we could have done that. But no, actually, you know, I take that back. That L21, I think, is in that rally. I don't really know whether this can be the same or not. Okay, so now this one we are doing a PLC5 write message. Great. And then we need to tell it, okay, well, where is this data you want to write? Well, we could create another tag here, but we know we're already using L0 through 9 for our read data. We can just start at L10 here. So we're going to put an L10 colon 10. And then, watch this, we're going to close that. Notice we don't have a 10. And then I'm going to hit the verify button. That's going to expend that data file out. And now our write data should be right in here. 
And let's go ahead and download that to our PLC. All right, and we see both of them are firing. This one is firing as soon as that one's done, and then it kind of resets and goes around. And so now L10 colon 10 should be writing data to our data from Micrologix. And so similarly, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4 in. Whoops, well, I'm putting 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 in. And over here, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. And then we go over here, and we could put 6, 7, 8. And we go over here, and there's our 6, 7, 8. Now, there's one more very important step to this. And um, here's where I think here's the difference between lean, efficient programmers and what I would call good programmers is let's think about this from a troubleshooting perspective. And for this one, we're going to go into Studio 5000 to start with. And we want to know what is writing to data from the MicroLogics. So we right-click, and we go to cross-reference, and we're going to feel nothing is writing to this. And that is because we're using a write message from the other PLC and filling this data in. And same, similarly to data two, we are going to cross-reference it. And yeah, we don't even we don't have anything in our ladder routine, so it really is going to feel like nothing is reading or writing to these. So this is what it looks like when the other device is doing all the reading and writing. Now let's talk about it from this side, though, because still I think we need some better breadcrumbs than I'm seeing in a lot of your programs. Is we have a read. From Studio 5000. And we go to the setup screen. I see it's a PLC5 read. I see we're reading data table address 20. And we go to the multi hop tab and we see that it is 191, which is my control logics over here. I go to my controller tags. I don't have an L20. And so what I would like for you all to think about doing is, yeah, this does say data from MicroLogix. What if we were to go to our edit tag column, and instead of saying data from MicroLogix, what if we were to add something there to help folks out when they're troubleshooting? So we know that data 2 is 20. Let's change this to L20, data from MicroLogix. Yep. Nope. And since I'm online, I can't do that. But I think this is important enough that I want to go offline just to show what I really feel we should be seeing in these programs. Is if we simply change this to L20 underscore. And we change this to L21 underscore. Just to give us a little breadcrumb. And then, yes, we're going to go ahead and download this because I do, I, I feel that a lot of people really struggle with this. Because now if we're working through it, we come here and we see L20. We see the multi-hop tab. Now I'm going to go over here. Oops, wasn't quite done. Almost done. And with that little bit of breadcrumb, I can go up here into my filter box. And I know there's only two tags. I'm just trying to show a point here. We could type L20. And they would realize that this is somehow connected to that. And then maybe that would jog their mind enough to get them over here to the map tags and see that. I have, I mean, I, I run two training classes a month pretty much. And I have never had anyone find this without a lot of help. So I'd love to hear from you. You know, how do y'all do that? How do you make it where people can find those? Because, you know, especially as we're, you know, Bridging generations of equipment, th this is a huge issue. Now, the other side of that is we could have had the control logics reading right to the macro logics. And so here's a playlist right here that includes that video.